Mother Teresa, Dr. Seuss, Albert Einstein. Is it possible that these enlightened historical figures were total scumbags? Yes. Yeah. Obviously. That's what we decide in Scumbags of History, where we pick through the dirty underwear pile of lesser known facts about some of the famous people society has put on a pedestal. We're your hosts. I'm Mateen Stewart. And I'm Brittany Schmidt. Let's get started. Lego. I'm talking about Scumbags of History. Talking about these people suck ass. They were pieces of shit. They still pieces of shit. Scumbags of history. Scumbags of history. Okay, Brandon. Today, today we are talking about Pablo Picasso. Pablo. Sure, he's one of the most famous painters of our time, but maybe he was also short, moody ass scumbag. Like. (laughs) Henry the Eighth in a smock, maybe. Okay, tell me what you know about Pablo Picasso. Did we just call him short as if that makes him a scumbag? Yeah, he's also a short. Because usually, I mean, short guys don't need to be scumbags off the bat. Like no, but they like a lot I'm not of times fuck them, they are. Oh yeah, exactly. So that's why they have to be. He was a syndrome. short, moody ass scumbag. They're just saying he has Napoleon like, syndrome. Like Henry the Eighth in a smock. Yeah. So what do you know about Pablo Picasso? Nothing really. People like geek out about his shit. He's I think he's Spanish or maybe French or maybe born in Spain. Bo- <laughs> so But wait, hang on. He did the cubism thing, which cubism. is like it really just looks like a fourth grader trying to figure out proportions and they can't figure it out. Yeah. Everything looks like a kid did it Mm -hmm. and i don't get it i i'm not a real big art guy either and i would see some of pablo picasso's art and i was like oh "Oh." where would you see it casually mateen no i mean like online or you would see like oh that this is a picasso or like people are looking for picassos or searching for picassos um but isn't like fine art all just like really high class money laundering it is it is because you can set the price for it right and a lot of his works probably have been used for money laundering yeah um it's trash but, but basically he, he was just eating baguettes and yeah. smoking cigarettes and being a fucking crabby crabby mccrab apple but think about it is i think for me he is one of the the most well-known artists He's he's probably he's definitely the most well known artist of our time. But when I hear Picasso, I always Do you think ass- he's bigger than Van Gogh? Yeah, of our time. Because what's our time? We were alive when he was alive. No, but what I mean, like when you when you think of Van Gogh, Van Gogh's like in the eighteen hundreds. Like Pablo Picasso was in the nineteen hundreds and like close we were closer to Pablo Picasso than we are at Van Gogh. Okay. Yeah. So here's what you don't know about Pablo Picasso. Well, here's what you should His know. name is Pablo Picasso. You're going to have to stop calling him Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso? <laughs> Pablo Picasso is my drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> we do not condone drugs on this uh, Scumbags of History podcast. Uh, All right. So those are yourself. here's a, here's some other details about uh, Pablo Picasso. Uh, he was considered the most influential artist of the 20th century. He was born in Spain. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> In 1881, well, okay, maybe I was wrong when I said that he, but he was, he lived a long time. He was famous for copious amounts of paintings, drawings, sculptures, ceramics, and theater sets. Uh, The guy had crazy range. Uh, There was a, his blue period when he was living in poverty and generally bummed out and painted depressing images about death and disease that was followed uh, by his cheerier rose period. Did he he get rich? Well, no he when he used lots of pinks and reds and painted fun scenes and circus clowns so he discovered lsd yeah so he had a blue period he's depressed as fuck yeah and then he found acid and, and starts then, microdosing and then, he, and then he does the rosy then period. he does his rose period yeah. where he's using um yeah or maybe reds. the blue period is when he's celibate and then he starts getting pussy yeah and, and then, then he, then he gets his rose, his rose period yeah, yeah, yeah. um then there was his african period what is generally inspired by African sculptures, especially mask and ancient Egyptian art. Why did he do that? I, I, he he met a guy named Mateen Stewart. Yes. (laughs) I'm mad that he called it his black period. (laughs) (laughs) He just started sculpting black people. Like why, why did it like, why is it like blue and red and like African? It it could even, it it was, it was Egyptian art. He was being sensitive. Uh, but things really got cooking for him around 1909, uh, when along with his pal, they didn't call it his colored period. His colored. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he had his colored period where he was scouting these big lip Africans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they they didn't call it that. Yeah, um, but uh, things like I said, things got really cooking for him around 1909 when he came um, along with his pal George Barask. Uh, Picasso uh, co-founded an abstract. George form- Barask. Are you sure it's not Basquiat? No, it's not Basquiat. Okay. That's that's another. That's a black guy. That's a colored artist. Um, can't. I can't say that. I can't. I can't say that. But I yeah. Can't. Um, and it's probably George Baruch. Okay. Um, he he founded uh, the abstract form of painting called Cubism. Cubism. Yeah, you knew that. Mark Cubism. Mark Cubism. <laughs> yes, the school of art basically broke away from the long-standing Renaissance tradition of trying to depict things accurately uh, from a single perspective. Cubism uh, confronts the problem of de- depicting three-dimensional forms in two-dimensional paintings by fragmenting the subject of the painting and showing it in multiple different perspectives. So it's essentially drawing <laughs> like a child. Yeah, cubism is not really fully understanding how to make something 3D. Yeah, and it, I feel like it's just like, this is what he just started doing, and then everyone was like, oh, that's different. Yeah, I feel like he just put like big noses and big eyes, and then... Yeah, everyone's and, like, and just oh, like, he's a genius. Made but everyone really, look he's like just... Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Uh, he today, really just <laughs> struggling. <laughs> you can't like, figure it out. <laughs> you can't. I've just made a face that yeah. you guys probably can't see. Uh, today, uh, his work is some of the most highly valued artwork in the world. Uh, his La Femmes, money launderers. Yeah, his La Femmes d'Algier broke the record for the most expensive painting ever sold in an auction. Wait, let me guess. Okay. Most expensive painting in an auction. Ever? Ever. $64 million. Ooh. Is that way too high? No. That's way too low. Really? Yes. <gasps> that's way too low. Like way too low. $200 million. All right. A little lower than that. $194 million. $179.4 million. Who bought that? I need their phone number. Yes. I'm 100- trying to date. And seventy nine point four million dollars. Throw it has been surpassed, um, but in, in at the time in two thousand and fifteen, he sold a painting for like how big was this painting? Do we know? Like just like physically, can you imagine? Mike, can you pull up the La F- La Femmes de Alger? Yeah, that's that's that helps, Mike. La Femmes. You didn't put that. In the le, le, le films. Picasso, most expensive Algar. Picasso painting. Just do that because whatever Mateen just I said. I said his la, f- la films. La films de, de Algar. Algar. Yeah, that's one. I know this one. Okay. I mean, it's pretty dope, but also. Like, I why? Could, what about I that? do that. Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a man. This, this painting is a man. He has like a green face and a red hat on. I think if you gave me four days, you could do that. I could do that. Yeah, Easy. he has a he has like a blue shirt with a gold. Um, and I would spend ruffle. three of the days not doing that. Yes, <laughs> I would yeah. spend three of the days doing um, something else with one hundred and seventy nine million yeah. dollars. I, I yeah, I, that's it's a lot just, of money. I can't imagine needing to launder money that bad. Yeah, well. Yeah, that's I know what I keep it, saying that, and that's not no, but co-signed by this podcast. No, it's not. But, but that is but a lot truly, of artwork is used yeah. for that because you can de- you can you just determine you the value of the stuff. Value. Like obviously, yeah. that thing is not worth one hundred seventy nine million. I mean, it, it is it is to the person who paid it. I did he like. ever have money when he was alive? Yes, he did. He was he, he was rich. Okay. Um, as as a British art critic, well, thank um, God. Yeah, he wasn't one of those like starving art. Artist like Monet, the whole time. like yeah. he was like, like Van Gogh, who didn't, fuck the whole time. who didn't sell yeah. any of his things. Um, again, yeah. so this British uh guy, Jonathan Joseph, he argues that after cubism, art would never be the same again. He, yeah, adds because that, trash is considered yeah. treasure. He adds that no artist ever created a more convincing modern art than cubism. Um, he is like really into the thing about critics is like critics always say things like it's, it's fact, but it's just their opinion. Right, and critics are just, you know, people who didn't do. Yeah, like they're just 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 do do what they want. They say what they want. So we talk about him having a blue period. Have you ever had like a blue period in your life when you like? When just, am I not in a blue period? Yeah, you are pretty. I'm you're always sad. You're, no, I'm not. I'm just not, like no. I'm not sad. I'm just like life is depressing and bleak. And why are we all here? What are we doing? Yeah. 
it is a struggle every day but for he, me to stay alive. Yeah, he had his he had his blue period, and Brittany's in her blue period. No, um, I got out of it. You I got was, out of it. You after had a my funk. divorce, I was in a blue period. Yes. And now I'm in a rosy period, but everyone's ignoring me, so she's, it's going to be blue again she's soon. In, she's in her rosy period trying to get to her black period. And <laughs> trying to get back to black. Get back to her black period. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel like as an artist, some of your best work comes when you're all the, of it when you're the saddest comes when you're sad there's nothing funny or creative about being happy yeah i remember when i was like happily married and everything was good i quit comedy yeah you and did like, you quit comedy and then nobody wants to hear yeah. about how good my life is right now like since my mom died i'm i'm a thousand time better comedian. of course like that like yes it's not even it's, it's not, not even, even close. close because you finally have an edge and you have an in and yeah. you have a thing that people are like oh yeah this guy's fucked up yeah and it makes you feel like you were like, too happy before you're yeah. like i'm a teacher <laughs> 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 and it's like shut the fuck up nobody <laughs> no cares. i'm like i would it's yeah. easy to leave my family <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, you gotta have the darkness. The darkness makes the the art. darkness makes the art. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, that is that is yeah. The darkness, as artists, we're artists ourselves as comedians. Uh, and we've we're all clowns. been. Yeah, we are clowns. We're we're glorified clowns. But I I do understand that like dark period, the the blue period that you go through, and some of your best work does come out of that. A hundred percent. Yeah. So here's what you. But you have to get out of it. That's the thing. You do because if you when you create in it and you're trying to be like, isn't this? Fun? And people are like, you're not okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that you want fifty one fifty your ass. Yeah. You have to. You have to. You have to get th- out of it. There's a balance. There's yeah. a there's a fine line. Yeah. Um. So well, here's what you don't know about Mister Short Moody ass. Stop calling him short. Who cares That's that he's was. short? Okay. You're being a shortest. I am being a shortest. I am six three by by the way. Um but he was he's a short guy. That's how what short is. is short. Sh- to me? How short is Picasso? Oh uh, he uh, If you're gonna keep calling him short, you better know he better I, be four three. Yeah. Pablo it's, Picasso was five four. Short. Yeah, it's pretty short. pretty short. Here's what we don't know about Pablo Picasso. Okay, great. It's estimated that he created anywhere between twenty thousand to fifty thousand works of art. Uh that is in fact a Guinness book. A world record. Twenty thousand. That's a thirty thousand piece of art discrepancy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that the is discrepancy. That, the is range, more the than range I will is, ever yeah, create. twenty twenty to fifty thousand right. arts of work. It's it's a it's an estimate. Uh, not arts of work, Mateen. A works of art. <laughs> what, what could be arts works of arts of work? <laughs> Who says it's not? Uh, while he was a cliche starving artist. As a young man, after moving to Paris, well, he was cliche, um, a starving artist as a young man after moving to Paris. But a writer, uh, Gertrude Stein, soon discovered him and became his p- primary p- patron. So that, okay. you, know, you know what that means? She's Gertrude Stein. Gertrude's taking care of him. Yeah, Gertrude Stein was one of his primary patrons. So, so she's buying his she's work. Bu- she's buying. <laughs> she's, she's buying his work. Yes, yes. She's using him as a butt plug. Yes, she's using his work. She was um, very. She was a fan of his work, and although he was apolitical for most of his life, the brutality of the Spanish Revolution inspired one of his most famous paintings, *Guernica*, which is one which was first shown, and nobody even wanted the art because it was kind of a bummer. So this was definitely during his his blue, blue period. period. Yeah. Um, so but he's it, broke. There's a war. Gertrude's the only girl that's knocking. He's five four. Yeah. So he's he was grumpy. He's grumpy. Doesn't have baguettes yet. Yeah. He doesn't. He, <laughs> he doesn't, doesn't have a croissant. <laughs> he doesn't have a croissant. <laughs> uh, his work it was considered kind of a bummer. Yeah. He's but a downer. it later became a symbol used to protest the Vietnam War. Okay. Can can you can we can we see what uh, is G U E R N I C A Gernica. You just went off there with not letters at the end. Oh, there we go. Is this cubism? This is cubism. This is bummerism. Yeah. So I. Yeah, this is I, fucking boring. So I don't. I don't. You How look, is that also? You look at it and you're like, yeah, okay. And I think a lot of times with art, people just see things and like they know that other people have called it cool, so they're like, oh yeah, this is cool. I don't see anything. I see a dragon. So it's a big, it's a big, yeah, it's a big painting with a lot of uh, shapes. Yeah, things going. No on. color. No color. Boring. Uh, 
Picasso joined the French Communist Party in 1944 because he admired its role in the French resistance. He bankrolled the party for years, including donating millions of francs to support a minor strike. Not francs. Francs. Not francs. Francs. French francs. Do you think it was Gertrude's francs? No, it was his francs because at this point he was he was making money. So he's one of those artists that was actually making money during the time but, he was alive. Uh, we just jumped from being poor and hanging out with Gertrude to having so this, millions this of This is years later. So when he was a young man. Okay. So when he was a young man. Okay, fine. When he was a young man, he was a, he was a cliche starving artist. But actually, like, Gertrude Stein held him down. and, and she, she was a down bitch. Yeah, she was down. She held him down. Um, I, I didn't know this, and I, I bet a lot of people don't know this. Picasso's The Reason the Dove is an international symbol for peace. His painting of one modeled after a pigeon given to him by the artist Matisse was chosen to represent the first World Peace Congress in Paris. Okay. But uh, a side note, this event was basically propaganda to promote Stalin's claim of pacifism. <laughs> side note, <laughs> side note. <laughs> Stalin. So, so, so this feat, this, I love a Stalin this, yeah, side so, note. So this dove, Rules it's, with the iron it's, fist. It's, it's the international symbol of peace. And it was like, uh, well, actually, it was used to, uh, it was basically. I love propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Wartime propaganda. What beats it? Nothing. Nothing. By 1968, uh, Picasso refused to answer questions about politics, saying he had given it up entirely. Yeah, I, you know, I feel that. Like, I'm so just, like, he's an artist. He doesn't need to have political opinions. But but I think he didn't want to, he, he had this idea of what he had. He had his ideas, and then once he realized that people weren't fucking with him like that, he didn't want to fuck up his money. Great. So he was like, yo, I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't fuck with politics. Yeah, that's, me and Picasso have that in common. I don't, I don't think politics should be discussed in, uh, like, a, a public forum. No. Well, not, I mean, a public I don't form, think like, everyone should be just shouting their beliefs from hilltops. It's like, just fucking Like, yeah, cares. you should just vote for who you want to vote yeah. for and not care yeah. what anybody else says. But uh, while Picasso became uh, pretty unfashionable amongst the avant-garde by his the late 50s, this was exactly when he became a mass international celebrity, ar- arguably celebrity's fine artist. He milked that shit, doing things like posing shirtless at the age of seventy for uh for uh, well good for him yeah yeah for David Time's Douglas up. Duncan so yeah so he became like this like like a sex symbol at seventy at, at, yeah yeah a five four short seven year old man posing shirtless he's for David short, Douglas Duncan he's a short Can daddy we, yeah oh, oh yeah look at, okay look at him. he's buff oh, I know he's he's Pablo look, Picasso look he, at him yeah. he's got ten chins and not one single fuck uh, yeah he's he just giving it he giving that oh that, yeah he's, he's chiseled he's slaying at least he doesn't look like shit yeah he lived to 91 years old oh damn painting obsessively into his last days still art critics typically dismiss his final quarter century as lame so well yeah that's when you get all the money you do get lame yeah I mean but and all the women but you're like 91 years old the, the fact that he's like still painting is yeah give it up though you know what i mean i don't want to still be telling jokes when i'm 91 <laughs> yeah well oh well, i'm not gonna make you it don't you don't still want to be telling jokes and you're 33 i know uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you were a painter after pablo picasso prime you were almost certainly inspired by him whether you were william de kooning jasper jones jackson pollock roy lichstein and so on so so far pablo picasso sounds like He's a legend. He's a force, despite being a little bit of complicated and a, a lot of bit of short. Um, but being short is not a crime. I would no, like to I, reiterate. I know, I, it's not. I'd like crime. to reiterate that being short does not. Being make short you. is not a crime. But that's so. He's a, he's he's a force to be reckoned with. He's 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 a man of the people for the people. But he was not the best boyfriend. Oh, shaco, shaco, chicken boom, boom, taco. Boom. Here's where celebrities suck. Here's where the scumbaggery gets in. Okay, uh, Picasso was a womanizer. He left most of his lovers of in an emotional shamble. He was not, by most stretches of imagination, a moral or good person. But hey, at least you got to be. You his can't muse. be everything. Yeah, you can't. You but- can't be brilliant, short. <laughs> <laughs> so you started Worldly cubitism. Depressed. 
and faithful. That's too yeah, much. That's too yeah, much. That's you can't too, have too you can't have all three. Yeah. So yeah. So what he what he would do that's is that he would become. Like he would come up to you and he'd be like, "Hey, what's up, baby? Like, you what's wanna, up, baby? You My wanna, name's Slim Shady. Yeah, no, I know you want to want to get down on this art, mm-hmm. and then he would paint you, mm-hmm. and then be like, "All right, bitch, be gone." But at least you got at to be. At least he muse. wasn't like you owe me money. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't that. It's not like he's doing the character caricature hustle. No, he, he, he yeah, he just and asks for five hundred bucks. <laughs> like here, you are my muse. Yeah, here's five. Here's you, take you this, owe me five hundred dollars. Take, take this. <laughs> and just imagine just being that woman getting a cubist picture of your like lopsided tits and your huge nose. And he's like, and then he's like, you owe me five hundred dollars. Five hundred francs. Francs. <laughs> Uh, here's a snapshot of a day in the life of Picasso. He's 61 years old, still married to his Russian ballet dancer, Olga Kolova, okay. who he has begged for him for a divorce for years. And after he started cheating following the birth of their son, she only found out about the cheating when she learned through the rumor mill that he had knocked up his mistress, Marie Tarih Walter. Well, she didn't assume he was cheating after he begged for a divorce. Yeah, well, she, no, she, she begged for the divorce. Oh, I thought he was begging no, for a so, divorce. No, 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 she, she begged for the divorce. And he so said, So she was nah. like, so Olga, the Russian ballet dancer was like, yo, just let me go. I know, I know you out here doing it, whatever. Yeah. But she didn't know that he had got this other lady, his mistress, right, right, right. Um, Marie Tari Walter, pregnant. Picasso has refused to grant, uh, his wife the divorce because under french law he would have to give up half of his estate to her mm. so yeah so that's why he was like no i can't yeah. divorce you yeah so this is this is back in a day where like usually a lot of women didn't have rights but in france if you got a divorce the woman was entitled to half your shocking estate. in france too because they really don't give a fuck about women Mm-mm. like not even today no um and so yeah so in french law he would have to give up half of his estate to her so she goes crazy. He's like, you're not going to have half my crayons. Yeah. So she went crazy. She went crazy. <laughs> His crayons. My crayons. His crayons. <laughs> crayons. My parchment. My crayons. <laughs> my markers. My crayons. He had a Spanish accent. <laughs> but he lived in France a lot. His finger paints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so she, w- with so she was. So she was. She, uh, she was going crazy for years. Like, mm-hmm. yo, just give me a yeah, divorce. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. But he did not give her a divorce no. until until his, her death like he he held steady how'd she die did um, he kill her no he did not kill her well, we don't know um, that no she i think she died of natural causes uh anyway in the meantime you can't think that okay well mike listen like mike how did how did um olga kolova die she didn't even take his last name no that's how much she fucking no. handed him She's like, you're not calling me Picasso. Well, she also so she was a famous ballet dancer, so she. How did Picasso's wife die? Let's not do all good. This is some girl in like Detroit. Yeah. It's like your fucking cousin. I know. Picasso's wife kills, kills herself. Ah. Uh, See. Yeah. Yeah, it was him. Yeah. By the way. But at sixty. Sixty. Yeah. At she's... herself. So yeah. So she, she killed herself. Killed herself. So he was natural mar- causes. Well, that's a natural after. <laughs> after 59 any way you die is natural causes <laughs> as, as, to me it's suicide is a natural it causes a natural you cause. naturally caused it yeah um and that was in your nature to not want to be here anymore no it's fucking being so imagine your husband being so unbearable you're like the only yeah the only way, way to out. get out He's not going to divorce me I'm going to kill myself For, I wonder how she killed herself yeah I hope she did it in some like some she, way that like well she did it in it a french a, it says she did it in a french chateau a chateau but a chateau. like i just hope she did it like on top of one of his favorite pieces of art or something yeah just yeah just he just painted with her blood yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway his his uh poor mistress uh marie walter uh who met him when he was when she was 17 and he was 45 uh lives down the street from him raising their son only he ditched her for his other mistress dora marr who also lives down the street. The two women slash neighbors, they hate each other, right? They just they just hate each other, uh, which Picasso finds hilarious. And he constantly pits them against each other. So these two women hated each other. He goes, yeah, I like I like her. I like you. I like I Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like the OG sister wife. Have you ever been in that situation? No. Where I have, there's one guy and multiple women. Not like where I'm aware. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Not where we're all aware of each other. So like, you, I'm sure I've been played like a kazoo, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. not well, like. Well, I'm sure you have too, but like. <laughs> <laughs> but not like not like cul-de-sac wars where we're like fighting over fighting over the same yeah, five no. four dude yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah she killed herself in 1977 uh, he de- he was still with Mar so he demanded that his mistress Mar be constantly available so even though she was a su- successful surrealist photographer at her prime she stays home all day waiting by the phone for him to call at his at his beck and will there's phones yeah. There's phones. Okay. There's also evidence of him physically abusing her and once punching her uh, in the eye, causing her to have. A well, time. I mean, that's just <laughs> that's, that's just, just times, baby. I know. Dinner's not ready. You're getting cheered to the head. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, I miss the good old days. Like, no, you don't. Picasso and Mar are out to dinner one night when Picasso spots a 21 year old aspiring artist, Francois Guillot. Uh, he abandons Mar. He abandoned Mar and goes to flirt with Gillard, bringing over uh, a bowl of cherries. Do we suppose Francois is a boy? No, uh, Francois is a. It's a girl. Okay, well, I don't uh, think Slick, his name is Francois then. It's yeah. Francois Fran- is a Francois. male name, or maybe it's like Francois. Francois. <laughs> Francois Gillot. Francis. Francois. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this Gilad girl, he abandoned Mar. He does the old cherry move. Yeah, the old cherry move. Uh-huh. Uh, bringing her a bowl of cherries. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a sick move back in the day. I guess that was like, <laughs> it's like a player move. And then he's like, "Come to my cul-de-sac, baby." But here's the thing. So he's out to dinner with this girl Mar. Mm-hmm. He sees this beautiful 21 year old. Mm-hmm. He leaves his table with his mistress. Mm-hmm. Was she still a mistress at this point when the, all the wives are dead? Yeah, they're all his mistress because he never divorced the other the original one. Right, so that's still the wife is just yeah, dead. Yeah, so yeah. Wait, but I'm confused because the wife committed suicide at 60 and he's 43 at this point, so... No, 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 but are, he's, still, he's still married to his original wife. He never divorced her. I understand, but is she still alive? Yeah, she's still alive at this point. Okay, at this yeah. point, so she hasn't killed herself Yeah, yet. they the no, okay. other girl hasn't killed herself at this okay, point. Okay, so either. he's just two-stepping so with he, a bowl so, of cherries. Yeah, so he's, he's at all yeah. his other mistress. They're at dinner. Yeah. Oh gang shit. <laughs> he just gang leaves shit. her. He leaves her permanently for Oh, I for, thought she would have left him. No, 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 he no, 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 no. No, he goes to the other girl and he never contacts again. Uh Mar But don't they live in the same subdivision? Yeah. Mar had a nervous breakdown. Uh she told she she told Picasso, as an artist, you may be extraordinary, but morally speaking, you are worthless. Yeah, you're uh, yeah. Yeah. And he was like I don't care. <laughs> yeah, he's like I'm fucking Picasso. <laughs> I'm 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 Picasso. Uh, Picasso once told a young Galoit that women are machines for suffering, and for me, there are only two kinds of women: goddesses and doormats. Ooh, oh, oh! Okay, machines what? for suffering. Let's break that down. So Does he mean that like they make men suffer, or we are just supposed to suffer and that's it? No, I I think it's like you make. You're just there f- to f- to suffer. To suffer, yeah. yeah. Okay. So whatever we do to you, it's nothing. It doesn't matter. That's what your that's your job. You're just supposed to be there dealing with this. Sh- it's now now I'm mad. He's five four. Yeah, because yeah, now can you imagine? I'm mad he's short. Can, yeah, imagine this the short little, king doing yeah, this, this troll, this little king. troll. I would punch him in the fucking. Throat. Uh, yeah, he had to like. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> A short guy just like stepping on the steps to yeah. punch you in your face. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I would knock him over the head with a stale baguette. Yeah, and so for and so he said, for me, there's two kinds of women: goddesses, goddesses and, and doormats. doormats. Which, yeah. which are you? Are you goddess or you're doormat? I think I'm a doormat. You're- <laughs> I think I've been treated exclusively like a doormat, except for my ex-husband treated me like a goddess. Oh, and then yes. I left because I'm like, left because you got it not, twisted. I'm a doormat. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't. I had to leave because I was like, you uh, treat me all yeah, yo, whoa, too what's nice. The, whoa, buddy. What's going on here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, what was no, but I guess it, for him, he's saying it. They're a goddess until they're a doormat. Like, because he's not treating anyone like a goddess. Thoroughly. No, but I think he's saying that he would treat a goddess like a goddess and treat a doormat like a doormat. No, because I think he there's just two jumps kinds. around. No, there's two kinds though. Okay, whatever. But I mean, would he if he found a goddess, would he treat her like a doormat? That's what I'm saying. All I know is everyone's killing themselves. That's right. Yeah, around him. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> oh, so man. you want to know what his relationship with Galot was like? Well, once he tried to toss her into the Cien River. Which one's Galot? Galot is the last one, the 21 year old that he left. Oh, with okay, the, the cherry, cherry yeah. bitch. Yeah, the cherry yeah. bitch. Uh, Sign River. Yeah, the Sign River. Okay. Uh, you want to know what a relationship with Galot Which is? Which is a violent Goliath river. Galot is the like. Way. Uh, once he tried to toss her into the Sign River when she annoyed him. Like he yeah. was just like, get, get out of my face. Another time, just for fun. Uh, while they while they were summering in uh, the south of France, Picasso made them live in a scorpion-ridden house he had bought for Dormar. Uh, there, every morning, he would read her a new heartsick letter he had just received from his other mistress, Marie. Uh, so he was reading. He's like, gather round. Gather round. I'm gonna read. So how he, much someone else so, so wants here. me. So he bought. That the, is how he bought this house. Yeah, filled with scorpions. Mar, yeah, filled with scorpions. He left Mar. Yeah, and then bought Galois there. And then while she was there, he would read these letters that Marie was writing him about how she's in so much pain yeah. and misses him. And she's like, Galois, just like, where are my fucking cherries? Yeah, and he would just always talk about his exes. Yeah. He would just talk about how awful they are. What a and, nightmare and this he guy was, is. And she, she was sick of being haunted by his exes. She eventually tried to run away. Well, also, by the way, when a guy talks about how crazy all of his exes are, it's the guy. You're it's the usually, common. It's usually you're the, the guy. Common you're the common denominator. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she was like, "Yo, I can't do this. I'm, I'm tired of you talking about all these yeah. other bitches. Too many scorpions. I, it's too many scorpions in this house. I need to get away. I need to get. I need to get out here. So she hitchhiked. She hitchhiked away, and then he, when the car had stopped, uh, it was him. He found out that she was trying to hitchhike. By seeing her trying to hitchhike. He told her that she needed to have a baby to improve herself. He said, you are developed only on the intellectual level. Everywhere else, you are retarded. <laughs> you, you, you won't know what it means to be a woman. Says the guy who paints retards. <laughs> until you have a child. Now, this is his words, not ours, okay? He said, you are developed only on the intellectual level. Everything else, you're retarded. You won't know what it means to be a woman until you have a child. So? Agree or disagree, Machine? I don't, I don't agree with that. What did she do? What do you think she did? I had a kid, obviously. Yeah, she got pregnant. <laughs> yeah, she got, she got pregnant. And Picasso refused to let her see the doctors because he was superstitious. So she got pregnant and he would not even let her see the doctors. Then what happened? Uh, she she had two kids with him. She realized that he was cheating her on her. Because here's the thing. Why should she even be surprised? He he was cheating. The whole time. The whole time. How you get him her. is how you lose him. Yeah. yeah. How you get him is how you lose him. That is that is real shit right there. Mm -hmm. um, so she had two kids with him. Uh, she found out he was, he was cheating. Uh, though he lied and he denied it. Because deny, deny, deny. Uh, when she when she threatened to leave him, he said, if you attempt to take a step outside my reality, you're headed straight for the desert. And if you go, that's exactly what I wish for you. I don't even know what that means. Where's the desert? They're in France. But I'm, I'm pretty much saying if you leave me, you're going to die. And if that happens. That's what I want. That's what I want. Well, I mean, just, you know, two children ago, he called her retarded. So. <laughs> I don't think this guy's a real charmer. Yeah. So what I want to know is she's still getting bit by scorpions and like every just, morning having to read love like, letters ah! from exes. Just, yeah. just, just all swollen. Yeah. Um. So she finally left, uh, becoming the only woman in his life to do so. Uh, he destroyed all her art. Um. So yeah. So she finally left, uh, becoming the only woman in his life to do so. To ever leave it, him. Yeah. To ever leave him. So you know what he did when she left. What? He destroyed all her artwork and belongings and told art dealers not to work with her. Mm. So he's He is a scorned lover. Yeah. Like he this is what I understand. Especially like if you're doing all the, the bad shit, right? Men it's so his ego is so astronomical. It's like he's doing all this bad shit. She's he's treating her like shit. And then when she's like, Yo, I I can't do this anymore, he's like, No, you can't go. And then when she finally leaves he just destroys all her shit. And can and, we keep in mind he has a whole ass wife? Yeah, a whole ass wife. A whole ass wife. And two mistresses. 
The two, two mistresses. mistresses. The whole ass wife is at home just about hanging off a rafter. Yeah, and yeah. And yeah. he's doing all this shit in the countryside in a scorpion infested house that he bought for a different mistress. Yeah, who his his younger this mistress. This guy's trash. Who is, who's his baby mama at this point? Two, trash. Two, his, two trash. of his kids. Um, so yeah, so she wrote a book about her experience dating him. Uh, and Picasso sued her three times to stop the pub- publication. Mm. Uh, he also had uh, his influential artist friends sign a petition to stop her memoir from seeing the light of day. So she she wrote a, she wrote this dope ass book. It was about to be published and everything, and then he tried to destroy it. Did he? Was he successful? No. Picasso had. Uh, he also paid off previous lovers to not publish her autobiography. Uh, of the time that they were together, which apparently included the accusation that he used to lock her up in his studio when he went out. He's like an old school Kardashian with like all these NDAs and mm-hmm. like cock blocking yeah. people from telling the truth. Yeah, he's paying people not to publish her book. So after her book was published, it was finally published, Picasso punished her by refusing to see uh, their two children ever again. So he's like, he's like, oh, you gonna publish this book now? Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna see the kids. Yeah. Which is, which is the dumbest shit in the world because he it hurts probably, the kids. Yeah, well, he probably didn't want to see the kids anyway. Yeah, that's just He's fucking cop out. Yeah. Um, eventually, though, to her, to her, to her credit, uh, Galat became a famous artist who, with a career nearly as long as Picasso's. Oh wow! So she her. she went from the gutter. Yeah. Um, started from the bottom. Now we nah, here. she started from the bottom. Uh, yeah. Started from almost getting pushed in the sign river. <laughs> to the sign river. She should have saw that as a sign as to sign. leave. <laughs> uh, anyway, with his attachment style, uh, it's not it's not surprising that of the seven significant women in his life, two committed suicide, mm-hmm. we discussed, mm-hmm. um, and two went completely batshit crazy. Yeah. It had to be committed. Um, but you know what he, you know what he said about this? What? Picasso says, love is the greatest refreshment in life. Mm. So he was like, you got to experience me. So it doesn't matter what happens after that. You lo- you got to love me. Love is the greatest refreshment in life. Uh, so he had two requirements for you uh, to be his lover. Mm. They all had to be submissive. They all had to be shorter than him. He was so a that was, dumb that was a daddy thing. Yeah, back yeah. in the day. So, he's, so he was 5'4", so he had to find women that were shorter than him. Yeah, which probably wasn't hard because women were short back yeah, in the day. Yeah, and this, women are still short, shorter than men. But yeah, so so these are the things. Which is, so I couldn't have dated him. No, you couldn't have dated him. because I would have dunked on his You would have dunked on his ass because <laughs> you're what, 5'7"? 5'9". Five, 5'9". Five, nine. Five, nine. You're 5'9"? Uh-huh. I don't know that about you. I'm a you tall, sure? I'm a big bitch. Yeah. I'm a whole yeah. lot of lady. You're a whole lot of lady. I'm a center. I'm a fucking center hitter. Five nine, five nine, starting guard. Okay, so yeah, if so he, they had to be shorter than him. He, he, we established he was five, 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 four. Um, and if Picasso had a crush on you, he is, <laughs> so, this is, so yo, if he had a crush on you, he would hand you a small gold figurine of a tiny man with a huge penis. <laughs> Right in front of his wife. Do you think that he like, sculpted those at home? Yeah. <laughs> like a really like. Then what if he didn't have a big day? Yeah. Propaganda. Pro- yeah, propaganda. <laughs> so like, we're out to dinner. I'm Picasso. You're his wife. You're my wife. He I'm pulls Picasso. out a figurine. He pulls a figurine <laughs> in front of his wife. Yeah. And just go hand. God damn it. And hands it to <laughs> his mistress. Yeah. Yeah. With a big old schlong. I wonder if he made his wife wing woman and be like, go hand this to her. Tell her it's Nah, because he wanted to do it himself. You think so? Yeah. So his granddaughter. With a uh, bowl of cherries. Yeah, with a bowl of cherries. Like, boo, 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 um, So, yeah. So his his granddaughter, Marie Picasso, uh, summed it up in an autobiography, calling him a vampire. He was a he was a PV. Yeah. A pussy vampire. <laughs> she writes, he, su- he submitted to his animal sexuality, tamed them, bewitched them, ingested them, and crushed them onto his canvas. Oh. Yeah. So he he, he was a, he was yeah, a vampire. Yeah, he consumed. He consumed. Consumed he a, their soul. He was a succubus. Yeah, succubus. 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 I love that band. 
Uh, after he spent many nights extracting In their Incubus? I know. I'm just talking shit. After he spent uh, many nights extracting their essence, once they were bled dry, he would dispose of them. He, w- he was a user. So he used yeah. women as his muses. Right. I'm still not convinced that these women committed suicide. Yeah. She also said that he basically used other people's blood for paint. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, we, yeah. We got there first. Yeah. The rest of those uh, close to him didn't fare much better. His son, Paolo, and his family depended on Picasso for money. When Paolo brought his children over to Picasso's house uh, to beg for cash, they would have to wait for hours to receive any. Sometimes they waited. uh, They were hungry. The grandchildren got to watch uh, Picasso devour devour tasty meals. So... So sometimes while they waited, they were hungry, and his grandchild, right, right, they were just there, and, yeah, and, and he was eating. He would eat. He would eat these fancy meals in front of their faces. Yeah. Uh, after his death, his grandson drank bleach and died. <laughs> <laughs> That's another suicide. Yeah. By the way, if we're counting, and his son drank himself to death. Okay. After. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, here's a here's a other another weird and random uh, fact. Uh, Pablo Picasso used to carry around a pistol loaded with bank blanks which he used to fire at anyone who asked him about his paintings, meant to insult his mentor, uh, Cezanne's memory, or simply bored him. So we got, you got, he was a loose cannon. He was a loose cannon. He was a short, moody, womanizer, it's, it's more abuser. More important now that he's short, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because, like, again. Mm-hmm. But he, he lived to 91. Uh, so where do you think that Pablo Picasso hits on our scumbags so here's the deal yeah. i don't really care about his art or art in general i don't like it either i don't care about it doesn't that. move my needle he seems like a horrendous person like in terms he of, is like if everyone around you is committing suicide <laughs> or going crazy <laughs> or going crazy or being committed yeah yeah you're pretty bad um and I, I just don't care about the redeeming things that he did. So scumbag, he really didn't and do he's any... short, and he's ugly yeah. again, which yeah. is important. Well, he was actually kind of ripped. Um, I mean, for seventy, yeah, for I mean, what that picture, ninety-one or whatever. He had muscles. Yeah. Um, I'll give him an eighty-two. Eighty-two. Yeah. Okay. He's a scumbag. He's he's definitely a scumbag. Certifiable. So he's certifiably a scumbag. Yeah. I mean, horrifically misogynistic. Yeah. The things that he said about women and. Either a goddess or a doormat. Kind of like, yeah, back in the day, everyone was a little yeah, misogynistic. Yeah, but, but like the the figurine thing is like that is like, yeah, and with a a short little short figurine with a big dick. Yeah. So like, I almost want to see like, and also not letting your wife get a divorce. Like, just let these women so, go because he didn't want to. He didn't yeah. want to. But even when they shit. weren't married, he didn't want them to go. He just yeah. wanted to. You. He was a. He was a PV. He was a. He was a pussy vampire. He was a vampire. He was a user. I like that eighty two, but I'm gonna go a little higher. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like an 86. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I think that's. I think yeah. Um, yeah. 86. He's a scumbag with some crayons. So, do we still stand that Pablo Picasso was a was a scumbag? Now let's factor in his legacy. Uh, does it outweigh the good? Here's the thing that I'm gonna have an issue with in pretty much all of these episodes is I don't care about anything that anyone's ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Because it doesn't directly affect you. Right. I literally, I don't care about art. I don't care about science. I don't care about fashion. I don't care. About, yeah. <laughs> I don't care about anything. Comedy. Kanye. Con, you care about Kanye. I care about Kanye. Yeah. I mean, he he definitely. Do we stand that he's a scumbag? Yeah, he's a fucking stand scumbag. Today's scumbag. Yeah, we still stand that he's today's scumbag. Like yeah. he wouldn't be able to get away with this shit. Uh, well, yes, he today. Would. I mean. People get away with crazy shit today still. Yeah, they do, but I mean... But not that level. Not like this level. Yeah, no. Um, if everyone around you is killing themselves, yeah. like, sound the alarms. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I don't... Yeah, he is, he's a still he's still a scumbag, but for me, I mean, I mean, I think we're all... Like, we do the show, we're we're all a little bit of a scumbag. We're scumbags, yeah. But, yeah. like, I don't, I don't think that we would, we would do this. So, I have a question for our fans, okay? Uh, tell us about a time in your life where you drove a lover low-key insane oh yeah that's a that's a good one that yeah. is a good yeah one. yeah so so yeah i have a question for our fans tell us a point in your life where you drove a lover completely insane do you have one did you ever drive anyone insane i don't know if i d- drove her insane but i mean she was definitely i got it i had, like a girl went through my phone and she found out yeah, yeah. Shit and she she was like 
not happy. Totally distraught about it. Yeah. Um, but that was the last time that that ever happened. How about you? Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. When I was, uh, I mean, I was hooking up with a guy on the Marquette basketball team mm-hmm. and he thought we were just hooking up and then he found out I was hooking up with all of his teammates uh, and he was like, he was like, come on, fuck? bro. Um, yeah, he really was mad. Yeah, I don't, I, I've never been like crazy. Yeah. No one has ever driven me insane. Yeah. Have he you? put a fist through the wall, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Property damage. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> Broke his own hand. Anyway. Well, hey, that's our show for today. If you are a scumbag and you're enjoying uh, Scumbags of History, make sure you review us and rate us on Apple Podcasts or anywhere podcasts are available. Thank you. I'm Mateen Stewart. And I'm Brittany Schmidt. See you later, scumbags. See ya.